Hello, welcome to Cat's Diamond Painting or welcome back if you've joined me here before. Today I am going to be doing an unboxing and kitting up video. It's a little bit different today because if you watched my last video, which was a whip and chat that I put up last week, I actually asked for your opinion on which canvas I should work on next. So I put up two choices. They were both Mandy Manzano's, Read Me a Bedtime Story and The Fairy Tale Sleeping Beauty. And I asked you on here and also my followers on Instagram to vote on which one I should kit up next. It was a very close vote. I think there was only one vote in it in the end, but the winner was the fairy tale Sleeping Beauty. So this is what I'm going to be doing today. So without further ado, I'm gonna get stuck in and have a look in the box. I say unboxing, it's always kind of a re-unboxing with me because I do check over my canvases when they first arrive just to make sure that everything looks how it should do. But everything's intact. I haven't got into the drills or anything like that yet. So, first of all, let's look at the toolkit. So this is one of Diamond Art Club's newer style toolkits. They do seem to come with the vast majority of paintings now. Um, but if you do buy an older kit that's maybe been in stock for a while, you may still get that older style toolkit, which is fine. It does the job fine. It just has a little bit less in it. So in the toolkit, you get a little roll of baggies to use when kitting up or kitting down. You get a tray and stopper. I often see people on Facebook groups asking what this little bit is. It's a stopper for the tray. So, oh, this one actually doesn't fit that well. It's really loose. Um, but normally that fits quite snugly in the spout and it just helps you to not lose drills from the tray when you're working with it. You get two multi-placers. That's a four-placer and a seven-placer or six-placer usually if you're using it with round drills. You get a pen and matching squishy. These do vary in colour. You get two plates of heart-shaped wax, Diamond Art Club wax, which is a really good wax for working with, to be honest. I use it quite a lot. And a nice little storage caddy. And you get a cover minder. This one's sweet. I love the cover minder. It's one of my favourite bits. Sorry, if you heard a weird bashing noise then, that was the cat trying to get in through the door that I'd closed. <laughs> um, yeah, so cover minders, if you're not sure what these are, when you're working on particularly a poured glue painting and you have that um, transparent plastic cover that covers the canvas, if you want to just pull that back and work on a section, you use the cover minder to hold it out of the way. So it's got a nice strong magnet on the back. Right, I just had to stop again because the doorbell went. So. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to be third time lucky. So yeah, as I was saying, the cover minder, um, you use this to hold the plastic cover out of the way. You put the pretty bit on the top and this magnet at the back of your canvas and they will go through the canvas. The magnet strength will go through the canvas to hold your cover out of the way. So that's what you get in the toolkit. Let me put that away. I should say as well, sometimes you do get washi tape in the toolkit. This one, it actually isn't even mentioned on there. Um, so never mind. Right, let's have a look at our canvas. So Diamond Art Club paintings come in this plastic dust cover, which is quite good for storing them to keep them clean. We have the lovely soft canvas. If you haven't bought from Diamond Art Club before, um, you might not know what I mean, but they have this incredibly soft, velvety feeling canvas. It's really got this luxurious feel that I love. So, I won't be able to show you it all in frame at the moment, I don't think, but I will pan over it in a moment to show you some more detail. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. So we have in here our sticker sheet. So we've got a large sticker here, probably designed for a logbook because you've got start date and end date section. And then we've got individual sticky labels for storage pots. And I will be using these when I'm kitting up in a little bit. 
And then we have our lovely roll of drills, which I will be looking in in a moment. So let me have a look at this canvas. I'm just going to, oh, just knocking the, cam the camera there. I'm just going to roll it back on itself to get it to lie a bit flatter. So because Diamond Art Club uses poured glue for the adhesive on their canvases, you can roll them back on themselves. They're very forgiving. You, you'll struggle to get any long lasting creases in it. If you're working on a double sided adhesive canvas, do not do this because you will ruin the glue. Right. Here we are. So there's the bottom half and if I just roll this back, <laughs> fighting with it, just trying to get it so you can see the top as well. As I say, I will scroll over this properly in a moment. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to working on this one. I've had it for a while. I, I had the canvas. And then for some reason I changed my mind about it. I think I was just trying to be a bit ruthless and cut down on my stash. And I sold it on, on a D-stash site. And then I just decided, actually, no, that was a mistake and I really wanted it, so I re-bought it. I've never done that before. Hopefully won't do it again. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really happy that I did rebuy it. I love Mandy Manzano's style. I love the, the kind of sections that you work on. You can like nicely outline a section in black and then fill it in and that's really satisfying. And I just think the colours in this one are gorgeous. So a little bit more detail about the actual canvas. So it's got 46 colours and only one AB drill. AB drills are Aurora Borealis drills. They have an extra special coating on the top um, that will help them to sparkle more and catch more light. Um, anything under 150 in the DMC code numbering on a Diamond Art Club painting will be an AB drill. That will vary for other companies. That's just how they label their AB drills. But that's how I knew there's only one. So it looks like it'll be a sort of yellowy drill. And you can see the number ones actually in this section here. Number one symbols. I'll show you when I pan over it more closely but that's where you're going to get those extra special sparkly accents. And I actually really like that often with Diamond Art Club, they don't overdo it with AB drills, partly because I find them a pain to work with. I love the effect, but I don't like working with them. But also because I just, for me personally, for my taste, I know this is very much a personal thing and, and a lot of people love more of a glitzy look. For me, I prefer it to just be accents. Um, so that's perfect. So I'm going to pan over the canvas, give you a closer look at it, and then we're going to have a look at some drills before I get stuck into kitting up.
couple of other things I've forgotten to mention so far. <laughs> it's a round drill painting. You can actually tell that with Diamond Art Club because the box will show you. It's either going to be a pink circle saying round diamonds or it's going to be a blue square for squares. And if you didn't notice already, it is 55 by 77 centimetres, which is a sort of medium sized painting for Diamond Art Club. They do quite a lot for ones that are significantly larger and they do have a selection of smaller paintings as well. I call this a sort of average size painting because I'm used to their larger sizes now. So let's have a look in our drill bag. One thing that I was really happy about looking over the canvas just then, and hopefully you'll have seen when I panned over it, just how clear and crisp the canvas is and how nice they are to work with, um, is it's a really good mixture of confetti and colour blocking. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll probably have heard me say that that is my preference. What I mean by that is colour blocking is a section where you can do a lot of one colour. So you see like these sections here where I can get my multi-placer out and do loads of that. Um, confetti would be a lot of colour changes within a small area. And I do see both in these painting. Probably veers slightly more towards confetti, like a real colour blocking fan might find this one a little bit fiddly. For me, it's a really good mixture and that is what I look for. I don't like too much of either one. So, look at these colours. Aren't they pretty? I'm just going to have a quick look at some of them and try and get them a little more organised, ready for kitting up in a moment. Diamond Art Club organises their drills, not in DMC number order in the packs, but by the size of the packs. So you'll find you have all the largest packs of drills together and then the smaller ones all in a strip as well. So this is one of the larger ones. So I've got my darker colours. So this is my 310, my black. And as you can see, Diamond Art Club with their newer drills, which they started producing around a year ago. And now you pretty much find in all kits, I think, unless you're buying a very old one that's been in stock for a long time. So they manufacture their drills in house and there's very little trash compared to how it used to be. You can see these look pretty uniform. So they're a real joy to work with. So there is, <laughs> oh my goodness, six bags of 310. Yikes. It doesn't look like there'll be that much in the painting when you look around it. Like there is a lot of the black symbol, but it's so spread out. It's hard to imagine there's that much. But anyway, there will be. <laughs> and what have we got here? It's a nice greeny colour. 550, that's a lovely purple colour. And a few others there. So 939 is a dark blue that you'll often see in these darker paintings. And sorry, if you hear scrabbling noises in the background, the cat has just come in the room and he's making himself comfy in his favourite Amazon box bed. <laughs> Classic cat, doesn't like a cat bed, he likes a box. Okay, so we've got more purples and greens, which are some of the predominant colours in the painting. And then some lovely pinky shades, getting into some of the brighter shades now. I love the shading that you get, A, in a Mandy Manzano painting, and B, the way Diamond Art Club renders it, because they are so clever with the way they use the drills to, to really reflect that, that shading in the original artwork, because it's so much depth. And for one is the colour I always like working with, a really nice, bright, vibrant orange. Ah, here is our AB drill. So do you see what I mean? If I compare that to, say, 741, they're fairly similar in colour. You can see that this one just has a sort of matte effect on top. And this one, the AB drill, has a special shiny coating on top. So this is the only bag of AB drills in the whole painting. So that is really low on AB drills for Diamond Art Club. As I said, I have no problem with that. Some people might not be so keen because I know AB drills are very popular amongst the diamond painting community. 
but then you can always buy them separately and switch them in if, if that's your kind of thing. So more purples and pink, lovely turquoisey colour. And now on to the strip of smaller bags of girls. So these are the ones that there aren't so many of. Oh, I like that sort of heavy cornflower blue. So there's a real mixture of lots and lots of darker colours and then some really bright, vibrant colours. That's going to be really fun to work with. Okay. That's our smallest bag. You can see there's really not that much in there of that one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get myself set up and ready for kitting up. So the first thing I like to do when kitting up, which I have shown you before, but just in case you haven't seen, is I take the sticker sheet that Diamond Art Club sends us and I use my printer, which has a copying function, to just make a copy of it. The reason I do that is because I will use these stickers um, for my storage pots so then they'll no longer be available for me to use as a key. When I work on the painting on my easel I can't always see the key on the side of the canvas so it's useful just to have another reference. So I'm just going to take my uh, paper guillotine and trim that. Ooh. <laughs> I love using this, it's so satisfying compared to scissors. <laughs> it only costs a few pounds on Amazon. It's well worth the investment, I think, if you do this kind of slightly crafty thing a lot. Okay. So that's done and put to one side. And I'm also just going to use this quickly to separate out my sticker sheet. So I'll keep this aside. In fact, what I will do is put this in my storage box on top, just so I can see at a glance which, which kit this box is for, because I've got several kits on the go at once. And these are ready to be used for kitting up. So I have here an empty bowl that I will put all my wrappers in, a big bag of drills, I've got a large tray that I will kit up over so that any spillage is contained, scissors of course, and my storage pots. So I'm going to be using this Elizabeth Ward style storage case. Um, it's actually a cheap version that I got off AliExpress. I've got three of these sets and I mix and match the pots depending on what I'm doing. I've got two of them in use at the moment, but this is what I have left over. And this looks like it will be a good amount for the kit I'm working on. In fact, I've got 46 pots in here now of varying sizes. And I do have a few others elsewhere, so if, if it seems like I don't have the right sizes, I can switch them. So, I'm going to start with my smallest strip. Let's cut a few of these off. I'll get going. One thing that is nice because of the fact that I uh, rebought this kit, that I destashed the original one I had and then bought a new one, is that I now have the newer DAC drills in it. So, as I've already mentioned, and as you're probably aware if you buy Diamond Art Club kits yourself, about a year or so ago, they started to phase in newer drills that they made in-house. So the square kits, the difference is more noticeable. 
and I've mentioned that on other videos where I've worked with them, that, um, <laughs> that basically um, they all have the same number of facets on top, so they're uniform, where square drills normally have the, the two patterns on top, I don't know. The round drills, it's oops, a little bit less noticeable um, because they were more uniform in the first place. But older Diamond Art Club round drills used to have so many facets to give them a really super shiny effect. They almost looked smooth on top. Um, and they were really sparkly and lovely. I used to find, because they were kind of so smooth on top, they didn't stick to my multi-placer as well. Like I'd have to change the wax a lot more often. Um, and I like these newer drills. So they have slightly fewer facets and maybe more of a shimmery effect than a sparkly, shiny effect. Oops, see, that's the point of the tray. <laughs> to contain my spillage. Um, but I, I quite like that anyway, and, and I really like the fact that I just found a, a rogue drill in one of my uh, pots that's waiting to be filled there from an old kit. Um, yeah, I like the fact that they're a bit easier to work with now, so they really, like, my wax doesn't need changing as often, and they stick really well to the pen and the multi-placer. is a problem when I'm talking and, and kitting up at the same time I get muddled about what order I'm doing things so I almost <laughs> poured those in a pot and chucked the pack away without actually labeling the pot which wouldn't be ideal so what drew me to this painting so I've mentioned before that it's got a good mix of confetti and colour blocking. I really like the colours. I like the, the mixture of dark and light and all of that kind of thing. I just I enjoy Mandy Manzano's style. She's interesting, isn't she? She's a bit of a sort of flagship artist for Dome Dark Club. And some of their oldest paintings seem to have been Mandy Manzano. So I'm guessing she was one of ooh, the first big artists that they licensed. So I only discovered Diamond Art Club in May 2021. So I was too late for things like the princess panels um, that I know people really like and they're really sought after. If you don't know what I mean, there used to be these um, big, long diamond paintings that they did um, with princesses from Disney paintings. Um, so things like, you know, Elsa and Anna from Frozen and, and that kind of thing. Um, and they all got discontinued because of, I think, a licensing issue with Disney. Um, so now, <laughs> because they were really popular, they get sold on on D-Stash sites for hundreds of pounds or dollars. <laughs> They're really sought after. I guess that's how the market works, isn't it? Supply and demand and all that. If there's not many kits available... They go for a lot. But yeah, I don't think... I mean, if I'd been buying kits when they were available, I may well have bought some of them. There's a couple that I quite like, like I think Daughter of Peace. Um, I thought was nice, but I'm not really into Disney and princesses, so I'd only have bought the ones that I particularly liked as a painting, um, which wasn't that many of them. So it doesn't bother me too much to have missed them. But I do like the Mandy Manzano kits that Diamond Art Club has in stock now. I have, um, I've done a few. So as I said, obviously to give me the choice for this one, I had this one and Read Me A Bedtime Story in my stash. And I've done, have I done two or three before? Um, let's see, I did You Must Believe which is a little diddy square one. <laughs> um, it's got a little panda in the middle of it, in fact, and you, can, you can't really see what it is because <laughs> it's too small. It's really pixelated. Um, 
So I've done that one and that was fun. That was, I think, one of the first squares I worked on from Diamond Art Club. <clears throat> and it was quite an old kit. <coughs> Excuse me. And I remember having a few problems with the drill quality in that one, which thankfully I haven't had in any recent ones. So the blacks and the dark blues in that one were full of trash, you know, really misshapen drills with tabs and they wouldn't sit well next to each other. But the canvas was nice, you know, and the, and the finished piece is beautiful. And that's the thing I always find with a Diamond Art Club, even if... You know, even on the rare occasions where you have some colours in the kit that aren't that good to work with and are a bit of a pain at the time, by the time it's done, it looks wonderful. You know, you can't tell. So I did that one and I did Wonderland, which is an Alice in Wonderland type one. And again, that one's like unusually for Diamond Art Club, really. By the way, I'm just shoving these in all anyhow into the storage box and then I'll organise them in the order I want to later. Yeah, so unusually really for Diamond Art Club, these are all ones where those two are both ones where they've maybe been a bit smaller than is ideal. So Wonderland. Um, and if you're not familiar with these paintings, you must believe in Wonderland. They are still on the website, so you can look them up. And I also have featured them in my one year diamond painting anniversary video that I put up in April when I'd been diamond painting for a year. Um, so it's Alice in Wonderland and it's got all these details like the Cheshire cat and flowers and um, this sort of castle thing in the corner and a clock. And a lot of that detail is either lost or a bit fuzzy. It is one that maybe they would have been better off doing in a size a bit more like this one that I'm working on, which to my mind has less detail in it and yet is bigger. <laughs> but then on the other hand, I know that um, Diamond Art Club and, and other companies like them often get flat for how big their paintings are because not everyone wants to work on ginormous paintings. I don't mind because I prefer that the finished piece looked as good as it could do and obviously the bigger painting you have the, the more detail you get in it but it's good that they try to cater for all tastes and for people who don't mind as much if it's a little more pixelated and, and a little bit fuzzy around the edges but it's a smaller painting you know it's good there's options for them anyway so those are the four that I think I've purchased so far um there are a couple of others I may get at some stage. Ooh. <laughs> we shall see. But yeah, I very much enjoy her style. But I try not to do too many of any one artist because otherwise I get a bit bored because however much I might like the original artwork to look at, the diamond paintings get samey. It is so hot in here today <laughs> we're having a heat wave in uh, in the uk so it's been sort of high 20s early 30s celsius which i think is something like mid 80s to 90s fahrenheit i'm not sure I don't really work in Fahrenheit, but I know that a lot of my viewers are from places like the United States and that's what you guys prefer. So I'm trying to uh, to adjust how I say it so it makes sense to you. So yeah, it might not sound that much because I know a lot of places get a lot hotter very regularly, but there's two things. One is that UK heat is a different kind of heat. <laughs> you know, I've been to other places other parts of the world when they're hot and with the exception of Egypt where I felt like I was going to die it was so hot but then it was almost 50 degrees celsius there um, and also one time in Spain when it was about 47 degrees celsius I remember really suffering but yeah in general like if you go to a lot of other countries and experience you know 30 degree heat there it feels a lot more manageable and I've seen um, other people who aren't native to the UK um, who've come to live here or stay here also actually corroborating this and saying there's something about UK heat. <laughs> I think it's very sticky and humid. 
But the other thing is, we're generally not a country that experiences significant heat. And therefore, we're not that used to it. But more importantly, our infrastructure isn't built for it. So if I go and stay in like continental Europe or something, the houses are built to keep the light and the heat out in the day. They've got shutters, they've got nice stone floors. It's not over insulated and you can actually feel really nice and cool. And also often people are more likely to have invested in things like air conditioning, aren't they? If, if, um, if they deal with heat a lot. But here, our houses are built to keep warmth in, <laughs> in our coldish winters. So, you know, our houses are really well insulated. Um, we often have carpet. We don't tend to have good light blocking blinds and that kind of thing. Basically, our houses do the opposite things of what you need them to <laughs> when the weather is this hot. So it's a little bit of a battle. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get comfortable in it. At night, it's sort of, you know, minimum clothes possible, a sheet, if anything, probably nothing. And then we've got building work opposite us at the moment. So when they start a bit early, like they did yesterday, you get woken early because obviously the window's open in the heat. And oh, anyway, it's a bit of a pain. We don't even have a fan at the moment. My husband doesn't really like fans because he says they just push the warm air around, which is maybe true to a degree. But I want to get um, one of those air cooler thingies that you can get. It's like somewhere between a fan and air conditioning because it pushes air over ice packs and cold water that you put in it. So it does actually have a cooling effect. Uh, but yeah, they cost money. My husband's not keen, so we're not doing that at the moment. Mind you, they're saying we might actually hit record temperatures next week. Like my weather app currently says 36 degrees for next Monday. And I think the, the record highest temperature we've ever seen in the country is somewhere like 38.6 degrees. So it's not far off that. So I just had to rearrange my chair there. <laughs> Um, so it's not far off that, but the long range forecast also suggested we might actually see a record, record temperature of more like 40 degrees, which is insane. It's supposed to be my son's sports day on Monday. <laughs> Somehow I don't think that'll be happening. You know, young kids running around a field in, in that kind of heat does not seem like a good idea. Which is a shame because we haven't been able to go to one of his sports days since his first year of school. And he's finishing up his fourth year of school. Ah oh, well. It will be what it will be. I'm sorry that this video is a bit later than I said. I did when I did my um my whip and chat last week I said if people could get their boats in by the end of the Thursday that I would try to do a kitting up video on the Friday and I just it's it's Tuesday <laughs> um that I'm doing this because I just I haven't been sleeping well partly the heat but also a lot just because of discomfort um, I've mentioned before that I have various issues with muscular pain um, and various, you know, parts of me that ache <laughs> quite a lot. And my shoulder aches, my neck hurts, my back aches, my glute aches. So sleeping is a constant battle between one part of my body hurting. So lying in a different position to rest that, but then that starts to ache. And yeah, anyway, it's not been great recently. So I've been really tired and I just haven't felt like doing this in the morning and the morning is my only chance to do it for the day because my husband's working upstairs um, doing remote teaching by video and my, my son is at school and later on in the day when my husband's around and my 
son's back from school. I just feel too self-conscious to be doing it then. So, basically, I haven't got round to it till now. So, apologies. It's a bit of a battle trying to manage it, it all at the moment. I'm doing a lot of stretches and exercises and I've got tools to help me deal with various aches and pains so like a back massager and um like a sort of um what's the word I'm looking for you know when you sort of extend your neck because I've had a lot of neck ache issue rec issues recently um what's it called what's it called what's it called uh, I can't think anyway <laughs> I got something that does that <laughs> yeah so today well I was determined to do it today anyway because it's been a week since I uploaded but I did manage to sleep a bit better last night I think I was just so exhausted <laughs> that I passed out <laughs> and slept through a lot of discomfort which happens sometimes and then I wake up the next day and things hurt more <laughs> but at least I've got some sleep which makes it easier to cope probably could have done it over the weekend but my son was away on the weekend so I was enjoying some time hanging out with my husband we'd um we'd originally asked for my in-laws to have my son on this weekend because we were going to go out with the um the parents from my son's football club so we were all going to have a bit of a get together and a social to get to know each other better but then quite a few people couldn't make it because of illness and uh, like one lady's pregnant so obviously she didn't particularly fancy going out in the evening um, and all that kind of stuff so there weren't many of us that could go and I, oh my goodness good thing I have the tray right and at the moment there's a lot of Covid about and we're still trying to be cautious um, you know our preference as a family is to still take precautions um, so just for all those reasons we decided not to actually go out so my husband and I hung out at home watched tv we're working our way through Jane the Virgin on uh, Netflix which is really fun we had a lovely takeaway and sat in the garden on Saturday night so when my son is away it's a good opportunity to get a takeaway from somewhere that he wouldn't be keen on <laughs> Because he's a good eater for his age, but he's eight, you know, there's a lot of things he's not open to trying. So we found this place that we'd never eaten at before that did Korean um, sort of street food style food. It was really good. Good vegetarian options for my husband. I had a duck dish, which I suspect probably wasn't very authentic, but I, I didn't know quite what to order off the menu. Um, but it was very tasty. So that was nice and my son got to go to the aquarium which was what my in-laws had planned to do with him and despite you know concerns about covid rates and stuff we didn't really want to cancel that because you know he needs to have a life and so we're balancing everything up really But he really, really loves, well, anything to do with animals, really. So, you know, he loves the zoo, he loves safari parks, um, and he loves aquariums. We actually went to an aquarium for his birthday treat last year. That's, you know, out of everything he could have done, <laughs> that was what he chose. So, he went there with his grandparents and went out nipped my finger that wasn't very sensible um and one of his uncles and his wife was there so they had a lovely weekend played lots of snooker I believe because my in-laws have a, a small snooker table at their house that they put up when he's coming so we all had a really nice relaxing weekend which was just what the doctor ordered we don't live near family like 
no one else lives less than about an hour and a quarter away from us which isn't terrible but I mean it's not like we have his grandparents just around the corner and they can pop in for a couple of hours you know if, if we want to go out and do something it requires a bit of organization and forward planning and also my son isn't very comfortable staying away from home in very many places so we're just a little limited on options and you know as much as we enjoy our son's company it, it is also nice to have time to have a date and just spend some time as a couple um so yeah that was a really nice weekend Ooh. some of these stickers are not properly um separated from each other today they're all coming off together <laughs> to be doing the weekend so we picked him up Sunday afternoon there's um a village around halfway between our houses and there's a pub there so it's often quite convenient to just stop there um use their car park to switch over his car seat and and his bags and things and then you know stop and have a drink or a meal or something depending on what's going on so we sat outside there and had a couple of drinks and then came home and then my friend was actually visiting someone just down the road from us a very good friend who has a daughter who is Joshua's age who he's known his entire life they're best friends as well and we don't get to see them that often because they live in a different part of the city and go to different schools and all that kind of thing um so it's always nice to see them and they decided spontaneously to hang around and wait for us to come back and I messaged and said oh should we pick up stuff and do a barbecue and my son was like yes please <laughs> so we stopped off on our way home and got a bit of food and I didn't tell my son <laughs> that they were coming so we got home and told him you know don't go off and start playing uh, a computer game right now because there's a surprise <laughs> uh, but you're gonna have to wait and see what it is and then he took a little longer to get there than I was expecting so he was like spontaneously combusting bouncing up and down and it's like what is it what is it and I kept telling him I'm not telling you all I'm telling you is that you'll really like it <laughs> and then they arrived and he was so excited my friend said to him was it a good surprise and he was like <laughs> he said to her I thought that you were ghosts because I thought it just couldn't be true it was it was too good to be true <laughs> so that was a really nice way to end the evening end the weekend rather over barbecue and a good chat and catch up oh I've got two bags of that one they might need to be in a bigger pot I need to start concentrating a bit more um, none of the rest of duplicates are they? No. Um, and we had the paddling pool out, so they got in there and had a bit of a water fight. And uh, we got out a swing ball set that my in laws had got my son for Christmas actually. And um, obviously, it didn't go up in December, <laughs> so we'd kind of forgotten he had it. So that's gone down really well. And yeah, I had a really nice evening. They've gone away this week because um, my friend's daughter has different school holidays. So we won't see them for a while now, so it's lovely. Sorry if you can hear banging and crashing in the background. That would be the building site opposite me. They use a digger and sometimes it seems like they kind of um, pack down the earth with it. They just like fudge the digger bit into the ground. And it makes the whole house vibrate. Loving these colours as I'm putting them in. must be an older painting because 
I don't remember it coming out, so it probably came out sometime after I started buying from Diamond, um, before I started buying from Diamond Art Club. But I just think it's gorgeous. Right, I'm going to do a quick check if I've got the right number of pots for how many colours I've got left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I do. Yeah, because I was looking at all the packs of drills I had and thinking that doesn't look right. But of course I forgot the million bags of free 10. So... Try and get these into some sort of order of how big they are to work out what's going to go in what pots. So obviously the black ones will go in one of the biggest pots. Let's find out what the other two biggest colours are. Because I've got three big, big pots set up in this storage. And then... The rest are the, the second size down, the ones like this. So I think 939 might be one of them. And hmm. so there's two bags of 890, but this 700 seems really big. I guess it's probably still the 890. I don't know, let's just crack on and see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes I can overthink these things. I really need to start getting organised for our holiday. We're going away in two weeks and two days. And I haven't flown anywhere in years since you know before the pandemic um and it always feels like it's just it, it gets in my head a lot more the packing when you're flying so you know everything that you take has to fit in a suitcase pretty much because often if we do a holiday it will be in the uk and we're driving so there's just so much more flexibility isn't there because you can like you can always squeeze something else in the car <laughs> Um, right, let's see if this one will fit in here. So yeah, I've got to figure out how to narrow down my packing list, but there's a lot of stuff I do need to take in order to manage my pain problems while I'm away, because that's a little bit of a concern when I'm away from home and I won't have, you know, my bed and all my equipment. So I've got to take as much as I can. And then I've also got to sort out things like travel insurance, you know, all the really fun stuff. But um, I didn't used to need to worry about it so much because um, the last time I travelled, we were still in the European Union. And um, I would have an EHIC card. It was like a special card that you could get for free that would give you um, access to medical care in a European Union member country. Um, so I didn't really have to worry about it if we were going to Europe. But now I do need to get some travel insurance sorted and things like a booster seat for the taxi and think about getting my euros and all this kind of stuff. It just feels like a long time <laughs> since I've had to think about this stuff and I feel very rusty. And obviously, I have to organise the packing for everyone because my son and husband are a bit hopeless. Oh, that catch is very loose. I hope that's going to be okay. Quite a few of these catches are feeling loose now, actually. I might actually have to start thinking about buying another kit and chucking out some of these that have worn down. I suppose maybe this is a flaw with buying the, the cheaper boxes, the kind of rip-off versions from AliExpress, that they're not as good quality. But honestly, I don't know if you can even buy the official Elizabeth Ward stuff anymore. And if you can, you're talking like 50 quid for the same thing I can get for 15 or 20 pounds. So, you know, I don't like chucking things away, but it's what I can afford, you know. 
can also just buy some replacement boxes actually now I think about it so maybe that's what I should do I'll look into that at least right last three colors don't actually need one as big as this for the 890 but this is what I have left to me so we'll roll with it <laughs> And then I'm not going to fit all that free 10 in one pot, but I'll get quite a bit in and then I will have the rest of it loose. And I think I might get started on this painting today. I'm just finishing a row of Family Circus and I'm torn between pushing on and getting that finished because I'm over halfway now or doing something a bit different. I'll see how I feel when I actually finish it. sticky label on this one okay let's see how much free 10 I can fit bags let's see if I'm right room for a third but not quite a full fourth I don't think eh, I might be able to fit it in but I don't think it's much point pushing it I'll just have them loose so the last thing I'm going to do is put these in order so I tend to just keep them in DMC order number. So I'll take out these later ones. DMC order number, what am I talking about? I'm DMC order, the number, <laughs> numbered by DMC. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I know a lot of people like to group by symbols or group by colors and all that kind of thing. I tend to find that by the time I've worked on a few on it for a couple of days, I've got quite familiar with what colours are where in my storage box. So when I see this symbol on the canvas, I, I know sort of where to look for and I'm not scrambling all over the, the storage box to find it. So I tend to just keep them in that order. Right. I don't think that these are going to fit quite. Right, so I'm going to have to put six up here. This is where maybe I should have put some of them in smaller containers where they're not that full. But it's done now. I can always switch them if it causes me real problems. All right, eight, nine, ten. There's 13, so 12, 13, uh, 14, there's 16, 15, <laughs> 16. How do you order yours? Do you like to keep them in this order? Or do you have a, a special system that works better for you? 
I always find it fascinating how all our brains just work so differently and we just tackle the same things in very different ways. <laughs> 21, 22, 23, just fit, <laughs> bit tight, I'll move that later if I can, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Almost there. I keep not being able to see what I'm looking for for looking, if you know what I mean. <laughs> when you're just staring all through them and you know it's got to be one of them, but you can't spot it. 34, 35, 36. 37. Right, will these all fit? 38, 39. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, just, but this row is a bit tighter than I would like. I'm going to see if I have a different one of the second largest size container and maybe switch this one into that because it really doesn't need to be in here. I don't, but I did find one of this size, the second smallest. So if I find one of this size that isn't too short, like that one, there's loads and loads of room. So let's switch that over. hasn't actually helped much has it I need to do that for another one as well okay if I switch this one as well from this row that's too tight then that should be okay Ooh. okay There we are, all done. And I can tuck these in here. And I'm all good to go. So that is the Fairy Tale Sleeping Beauty all kitted up. And I'm going to start working on this soon. So you'll start seeing um, whip photos um, on my Instagram. And also, you know, maybe it'll feature in a, a whip video soon. So I hope that you've enjoyed that. If you have, please consider liking the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.